Thank you so much guys. In my last video I got so many comments and questions about the 3D print and the wet liquid coloring process. Uh, that's the reason uh, I'm doing this video right now, but it's gonna be totally different because I'm going a very different approach to make the 3D prints. Uh, the 3D prints have so much texture and they are so detailed, right? And that's the reason I was thinking I need to, to do a 3D print from a collodion wet plate with the right subject. For that I went uh, on a walk. <laughs> During my walk I visited one of my friends. Uh, we have a lot of animals out here. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed this beautiful day and at some point I came to an old tree and found this little branch that was heavily overgrown. I liked that it looked like a victory symbol, it was really cool. Beside the branch I collected some other stuff and at the end of the day I found these Japanese lanterns in my garden. I know I have them all the time but I, I often forget about them. I love the ones where there was only the skeleton left. Inside the skeleton there lives a little red fruit and that's the reason that they're a very popular symbol for a life within death. After I chose my subject I prepared everything for the wet lake collodion shoot. So I made a fresh developer, a fresh fixer, fresh collodion, I needed silver nitrate and to protect the plate at the end I need uh, the sandrack varnish. So after the chemicals were ready I prepared this baby here, my 8x10 camera. Uh, I set it up and I also set up my 1000 watt tensile strobe with a reflector and a grid inside. After that I set up my branch and started to focus my camera. Because I used a very fast Petzval lens with a shallow depth of field, I had to use the movements of my camera to move the focal plane. This technique is called a Scheinflug. With that I was able to get most of the branch in focus and sharp. So with everything in place, I started to pour my first plate and walked then the collodion from one corner to the next one until I covered the whole plate. After that I put it into the silver nitrate bath to make it light sensitive and waited for about 3 minutes. Then it came out of the silver nitrate bath into a light sealed plate holder. The plate holder I put in my camera and opened the dark slide and did the exposure. You can see I, I needed a lot of light because I did a marker shot and had a, a large extension on my camera. Back in the darkroom I put the blade out of the blade holder and started to develop the blade. This is a very exciting moment. <laughs> Stopping the developer with water. And finally the moment when the magic happens, the fixing process. Guys, I'm always like a little kid before Christmas when I do the fixing of my plates. It's so nice to see that. started again for the second plate. After fixing I did some retouching with a cotton pad. Uh, to get rid of some dirt. After the plates are washed and dried, I varnish them with sandrag varnish. Varnishing is the moment where you have to work very clean and very concentrated because you can just ruin the plate in one blink of an eye. And this plate's worked out very, really well. So isn't this glossy look amazing? I love it so much when I finally can hold the plates in my hand and, and see that my idea came to life. It's like amazing, I'm always excited. It's one of the best feelings I can imagine. 
Yeah, I also like for what these plates stand for. Life within death is very relevant these days, I think. And also nature's victory is happening right now because all the people are staying at home, well, a lot of people are staying at home and during the lockdown and the nature can relax again. And now I want to show you uh, how I did the 3D prints. First of all, I started with uh, scanning the plates. I scan the plates with an Epson scanner and then I import them into Lightroom. Here in Lightroom you can see how much resolution one of the plates has. And this is crazy, really. I could print them in the size of a house and you would see a lot of detail still. After that, the Lightroom uh, export, I opened them in a website. The website is called uh, itslito.com. First I upload the image there, then I do some basic corrections to get it as bright as possible, but take care to not lose any detail if you brighten it up. In the last step I choose uh, the shape and the size and also add a frame or adjust the frame if I want. And uh, if you look here right now, uh, until here, uh, the website doesn't need any internet connection. This is quite interesting, I think. Now I download the lithophen and also the color lithophen. more about that later. And I import it into my slicer for the 3D print. I use IdeaMaker for slicing my 3D prints. Because it was the first software I tried and I liked it so much that I stayed with it. You know, as a beginner it was easy to use, so why not? I will not go through all the settings here uh, on the video, but you can find them on my blog. I will also uh, put there a profile from Idea Maker. The profile is for uh, my favorite filament. The filament I use is from Extruder. It's called Arctic White, so I don't get any Money for saying that, it's everything here I bought by myself. I just let you know what worked the best for me and hopefully uh, you can get it done with the same settings and material too. As you've seen in the idea maker, a print took about 22 hours. Together with creating the chemicals, uh, with doing the wet lecaluin process, it took about five days to finish everything. Uh, soon you're gonna see that it was totally worth it. Before I start showing you the video, I'll show you real quick how I created the color little thing. I said before you can do it on the website, but to have more control uh, about the whole printing process, I created my own and I'll show you how I did that. I did a picture of the uh, ground glass here of the camera when I was focusing uh, on the branch. And then I imported the picture into Affinity Photo. Uh, there I get rid of the lines from the ground glass. And then I change to Photoshop, use some uh, content aware magic there and auto line the layers with the original wet plate print. After finishing that I printed it on clear film. I cut it and put it behind the 3D print. I think now I talked enough and let you finally see the results. And after the results, as in the last video, I show you where you can get the prints. So this time you can get final prints too, they look amazing, they have a wonderful surface and these final prints and uh, 3D prints are available here under this link. Thanks a lot to all the people who supported my work the last time and bought the 3D prints. The prints go to Australia, to America, to Germany, to UK and uh, thanks for supporting me guys. Also a big thanks to Michael and Philip. My patrons, you, become, you can become one of my patrons here under this link. And they support me and I support them to, became, to become a wet plate artist. And yeah, before I forget, one of you guys sent me an email about uh, carbon print. I answered it, but somehow the email address you sent me was wrong, so please send it again. That's pretty it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit the thumbs up button, support the channel, and subscribe if you want to see more about my work. And I'll be back guys!